Hello, good morning and welcome to what is going to be an epic weekend. Right here is my trailer and it's empty because the Tenere 700 is in here at Motomart getting some brand new tires fitted. Now this is the Pirelli Scorpion STR that I've been running for the best part of 20, 15 to 20,000 Ks. Still got quite a bit of meat left on it, but for what we've got in mind, this is not going to cut the mustard. Now everyone's seen Poltari's uh, do amazing things on a Tenere 700, and the guys at motogear.co.nz, they hit me up and they said, hey, Poltari's does amazing things on a T7. You've got a T7, we wanna see what you can do. So they sent me down a set of Maxxis Enduro tires, which we're putting on the bike right now, and we're going to a trail ride. Changing tires in theory is easy. But in practice, well, you need a bit of practice. And if you don't need to do it, it's easier just to pay someone else to do it. So I took the T7 to the skill team at Motomart, who do it for a living. They know exactly what they're doing when it comes to directional tyres and that sort of thing. And it means that I get to spend time checking out the bikes in the showroom while they're doing it. About 40 minutes later, the Maxxis Enduro tyres were on the Tenere 700 and they were off to be road tested. Then the bike was loaded onto the trailer and we were off to Topol. Saturday morning dawned and it was time to get our gear on. Right, so these pods they're meant to um, save you if you come off. They also work as knee guards. Yeah. They're, um, yeah, they stop you from hyperextending your knee, don't they? Exactly. They're really good. They're actually the ones that Chris Birch wears. Oh, cool. They're a little bit of a faff to get on. <laughs> but once they're on, they're actually quite comfortable. All day comfortable. All right, here we are at Vern Buster. She's a wet, wet day, and I'm sheltering here inside the Michelin tent with the brand new Michelin Star Cross tires. Check these out. I'm not running them, but they are brand new and they're being launched here today. And uh, well, thankfully with this wetness, we've got a caravan or a trailer to hide inside. Gotta go get the T7 organized. Got the, uh, the pods on, the knee braces, and uh, looking forward to a great day in the wet. A bit nervous though. The uh, T7 is quite heavy. Here we go. Finally, all geared up, it was time to see how the 220 plus kg Tenere 700 goes on the trails. So hopefully a piece of camera on the 360 works. We've been for one little loop so far. Just kind of warming up the old girl. We did about eight kilometers. I've got some good rear end traction, but the the, uh, the front a little bit squirmy. Getting a bit nervous going into the uh, the ruts. And with this weather, those ruts are just going to get deeper. However, Matt has talked me into going for a longer loop. So let's see how it goes. I got my. I got my adventure helmet too, but I think the visor on that will just walk up to My usual riding companion, Matt from onthrottle.co.nz, was along on his Honda CRF 250 rally. Not only were we putting our adventure bikes to the test on the trails, but we were testing out a bit of other gear as well, like the Cardo Pack Talk Edge Bluetooth comms kits. Seriously, if they can handle these conditions, then they can handle pretty much anything. Connection was pretty easy. Press and hold the intercom peering button and they just synced up. The easiest peering experience I have ever had with the Bluetooth comms kit. And spoiler alert, the Pack Talk Edge units worked amazingly through all that mud, pumice and rain. Not a single issue and I still had 100% battery when I got home after 3 hours on the bike. 
kitted out in Revit Dirt Series jacket and pants, I was actually still dry at this point in the day, which does say a lot. I finally got to test out my Arrow Ramp helmet as well. I love this design and kind of wish I could wear it more often. Once on the trails, things got real. We were getting passed by kids, roosted by KTMs and laughed at by everybody. But we were on a mission to prove that you can trail ride on an adventure bike. The Maxxis tyres were my saviour. Without full knobblies, there is absolutely no way I could have attempted these trails in these conditions. With all the weight of the bike, there was no point trying to avoid the ruts. So I planted the bike in the rut and just wound on the power. Oh, kid. Hang on. Can you hold my bike, bro? Oh, very. Oh, yeah. Did you come up here, Matt? You all good? on the ruts became deeper and I started to have ground clearance issues on the T7. I was lucky in this instance that I was able to pour on the power and then push through my legs to get the bike through the rut. You good? only people to get caught out. What's up? What's up? 
I had all the grip I needed to get up the hill, but I picked the wrong line, and like a square peg in a round hole, my skid plate got wedged in the rut. It required about three guys and a lot of energy to get the Tenere 700 out of this situation. Later. How's that? <laughs> Best bike for the occasion, I've got to say. <laughs> and there we have it. It's just gone about one o'clock, not long after lunch, and everyone's packing up and going home because it is very wet. T7 did a great job. I got stuck one hill climb, but otherwise, it did what we expected it to do. You know, a big heavy adventure bike. Did the uh, did everything was asked of it apart from getting stuck because it just didn't have the uh, the ground clearance. Otherwise, great grip from those tyres. Anywhere I put it, I could just put more power on. It would dig its way out. Generally speaking, so that's Burn Buster. Might ride tomorrow. I'll come out here tomorrow anyway, and I'll see what's going on, and I might show you what's going on. But otherwise, uh, I think it's time to go get warm and have a beer. It's very cold. Well, good morning. It is uh, Sunday morning. The big uh, events of today, the T7 did a great job, but it's not coming off the trailer because I've blown out my knee. Um, it's quite painful. Can't really ride. It's kind of painful even to sit in a car. So uh, we'll get a bit of footage of Matt on Rosie the Rally hiding behind the Michelin flag there. And um, it's going to be a good day. It's not raining. And this pumicey soil has drained away beautifully. This is Craig from Northern Accessories. They're the Michelin people. There you go, Michelin. Craig. I'm wearing my Michelin jacket on. Ah, oh, well, you I get wish, there. At least it's branded, though. Hey. Hey, tell us quickly about these new tyres, the Starcross 6s. So, Michelin Starcross 6, uh, all new from the ground up. So, you can run them at normal pressures now, unlike the Starcross 5s that needed the higher pressure. Still a 2 ply casing. Uh, they're all silicon compound now, so you've got extra longevity uh, up to 11%. Uh, you've got, they are now directional, the old ones weren't. They use something called adaptive tread design. Uh, so you've got a driving, driving direction one way, which is hence the directional tyres. The 100% silicon compound, as I've already mentioned, increases the uh, longevity of them, but you also get up to 19% more grip, depending on the, the model. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a great product. T7 is nice and grubby, check that out. I'm gonna have my work cut out for me cleaning that girl up when I get it back to Wellington. Probably the only motorbike out there yesterday in full road, guys. Number plate and luggage rack and everything. Got the Moto SR team putting in the hard yards. Matt's all geared up, ready Ooh. to go. Hell yeah. Hopefully, it's not as challenging in places as it was yesterday. But I'm, I'm not really uh, convinced. <laughs> Got your cardo on? No, nah, I'm not going to bother. Get good enough audio. Doesn't want to talk to me anyway. You, know. you don't have a cardo. No, I don't. Yeah. I've got it with me, but yeah. <laughs> Mine's in the car. Yeah, yeah, true. Don't shout abuse at him. Come on, what are you doing? You're too fucking slow. <laughs> Hurry up! I'm bored. <laughs> right, what's the plan, gentlemen? Fall off. Come back. Yeah. Don't use an ambulance to get home. Been there. Not much fun. Yeah. Go out. Have fun. Get grubby, but not too grubby. And while you're gone, 
Anybody want some tires? Matt and Craig headed out for a blast, and because I had a bun knee, I was unable to go. So thank you, Matt, on throttle.co.nz for this footage. Would the mighty CRF 250 rally make it back in one piece? Oh, yeah, I'm going to step the store if I have to get I think. Great shot for that. Ooh, that's okay. nice. Back there. Woo! Almost. <laughs> Later in the day, we managed to talk Matt into having a go on Craig's KTM 300 Six Days Two Stroke Machine. Here we go, it's Matt on the KTM Six Days. If I can get those uh, up. Not wanting to go on anything too long, Matt had a wee blast through the loop created for the demo bikes. Matt had a blast. Matt had a wee blast through the loop created for the demo bikes from AFC Motorcycles. A short two-kilometer bash through the bush, and came back absolutely glowing. So easy. In what way? Well, it goes where you want it to. <laughs> like you see a rut, you want to go, I don't want to go in that rut. You don't go in that rut. It's so intuitive compared to the rally. The rally just fighting to make it go anywhere. This, get to a bit of a big puddle or whatever. Small blip of the clutch, front wheel skims over it. You don't get completely drenched. Oh, it's a revelation. <laughs> Yeah, it's such a cheetah bike. Cheetah, cheetah bike. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, I still love my rally, but <laughs> this is nice. And just like that, our adventure assault on Burn Buster was over. A massive thank you to motogear.co.nz for their support for the Maxxis Enduro tyres, the Revit Dirt Series gear and the Arrow helmet. Also, a high five and a massive thank you to Northern Accessories. They're the team behind the Road Guide and the Dirt Guide for having us and allowing us to use their trailer during the rain. So I guess in a way we've answered the question about whether you can adventure ride Sorry, trail ride and adventure bike. But when it comes to riding in all that pumicey soil, it's some serious damage to the bike. It's not pretty and shiny anymore, it's pretty scratched up. And I've already water blasted the bike and there is still pumice everywhere. Check out inside the bash plate. I'm gonna have to take that off to get that. It's just like sandpaper. Check it out. Crazy. So yeah, you can trail ride an adventure bike, but should you? Probably not. Not to mention my driveway. I brought half a topo home with me. <laughs> <laughs>